crystal ball, please speak to me and show me what I want to see. Tell me about this James Freeman. Was he really tased and beaten? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you're familiar with James Freeman, but he's one of the old auditors. He's been doing this for a while, and he's been getting things wrong for a while, and I, I'm pretty sure I've talked about him on this channel before, but it's overdue for another conversation. So we're going to get into this video. It's alert! Exclamation mark. James Freeman arrested, beaten, and tased and it's by honor your oath civil rights investigations i'm assuming it's just a mirror of a different video but this is the one i found we're gonna watch it huh looks like it's a mirror of johnny 5o's video now johnny 5o was also one of the old school auditors he's also an idiot and he has definitely shown up on this channel before a couple times Oh, what a reasonable request. Oh, hey, sir, don't care if you're here, but I don't want you too close to my scene. Yes, police can do that. They can be like, oh, you're too close. Gonna have to have you step back. Now, auditors like to go, oh, filming, blah. Hey, bud, if you're too far away, telephoto lens, perhaps. Got a little more zoom on that thing. A lot of you claim to be super successful, so obviously you have enough money for a cheap telephoto lens, right? Right? What's your excuse? I'm going to ask you to move back from my seat. Ten feet. No. Yeah, that's the ruling. No, there is exactly zero ruling that says ten feet is the most an officer can have you step back from a scene. None. There are none. Zero rulings. Not a single one exists. I tried to find them. I try to find them every few months. Not a single one. Ten feet. No. Yeah, that's the ruling. I can make the ruling. I'm going to you don't get to make the ruling. Shut the f up. Uh, no, that guy appears to be in charge of the scene, so he can determine what is reasonable regarding the distance he can have people stand back from it. Now, of course, you can challenge the reasonableness of that decision. However, while he's on scene, yes, he can determine that distance, and it can be more than ten feet. Unless, of course, James, you want to provide some case law. Prove me wrong. Nobody else has been able to do it. You could be the first. It's a traffic stop. I've given you twice as much space as you need. Uh, you don't get to make that decision. <laughs> Who is this guy? It doesn't matter how much fucking tape you put up, you dumbass. All right, man. Right. I actually do love this. So a lot of auditors are like, um, well, you had to put up tape. Otherwise, I'm not exempt from this sidewalk or this street or this whatever. That's not true, by the way. That's absolutely not true. It just makes the officer's job easier because it sets up a barrier that is not to be crossed. So you don't have to be like, oh, excuse me. Uh, hey, you over there, you, you can't be there, right? Basically, if the tape's not there, you get one warning. If the tape is there and you cross into that tape, that warning is not required. You can just arrest them for obstruction and possibly trespassing to the crime scene, depending on the state and how all the laws are written. It's a whole complicated thing. We'll get to that, I assume, at some point in this video. The fun thing about this is that they're setting up the tape, and now, oh, they've got the tape. Now it's, 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 there's something wrong with that as well. Ah. Like, bro, what, what is it? The auditor community established an incorrect sort of guideline for how this should work, according to the auditing community so now that the officers are doing these things within the arbitrary rules that the auditing community's made up what's wrong about it hmm? what's the issue why can't you all agree on something it's almost like you can't agree on something auditing community because the things that you're saying are made up and have no basis in fact shocking i know let's keep going all right then tell him to chill the f out let me record Let's just all be quiet. Move on. You look like an idiot. What? No. You're going to get sued. Oh, I do like that he's saying you're going to get arrested if you don't move. Setting a condition for what will happen if he does not obey these instructions. It's a great move, legally. It makes things a little easier in court, potentially. Just a legal... Don't worry about it. Behind the, uh, you guys can't just put up tape every time you want to move a camera. They're not putting up tape because they want to move a camera. They're putting up tape to mark the barrier of the crime scene where the public can't go 
because it's a crime scene. This has got to be more than just a mere traffic stop. You don't put up crime scene tape for a traffic stop. So presumably there's more going on here that James Freeman doesn't know. Shocking, I know, that James Freeman wouldn't know something. It's the craziest thing. Who would have thought? Speaking of restricting the public's access to areas, the Supreme Court has ruled in this case that the press does not generally get any special privileges to access a place that the public does not. So this isn't about a camera. Everyone's excluded from this place, not just you. And because you don't have any special privileges to access this space that the public doesn't get, ooh, shucks, bud, you don't get to go there either. Really simple stuff. This case right here. Check it out sometime. No, that's not the way the law works. All right, guys, uh, you got my lawyer on the phone. This is going to be it. I need names of everybody getting sued here tonight. So it's just a traffic stop. We've dealt with this case specifically. Now, here's the sidewalk. This is a public sidewalk. Now, they don't want me filming their traffic stop. Yeah, they can block off a public sidewalk, champ. I don't know why you think they can't. You've been doing this for a while. Surely you've encountered this before. And what happened to the phone call with your lawyer? Where was Where'd that go? What happened there? Huh? i just curious. Can we get that video? I'd love to have that video. Did the lawyer tell you that you were a big dum-dum? Like what they did. Now, if they didn't, they're lying to you, so you should probably get a different lawyer, I think. You want a lawyer that lies to you? Ha! Good luck finding one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to wrap tape all around this place because they don't want me to film their traffic stop. Somebody has put it in their mind <clears throat> that if they put tape around an area that no matter what no matter what that that means see they're not supposed to be putting up tape though except to preserve a crime scene okay there are a lot of issues here first of all the people who put this in their head could very well be the auditing community because they say that kind of stuff a lot you can't move me without tape you can't stop me from going there without tape this scene needs tape this needs tape, and now they're doing it, and you still want to complain. What a shock. It's almost as if it's not actually about tape. Now, regarding the rest of it, first, there's no confusion about where that tape is. It's pretty obvious that he's within the area he cannot be. Second, they're not stopping him from filming. They're just saying that he cannot be standing in that particular spot. His filming can continue. Get a better lens. Super simple stuff. You've been doing this for a while. Surely, surely. You got some money saved up. Why not? They're not that expensive compared to, you know, everything else for cameras. My cameras are nuts, guys. Whew. I mean, I have, what, 15,000 subscribers, and I'm still able to get a $2,000 camera. Thank you, everyone, for being so generous, by the way. James Freeman has 369,000 subscribers. So what is the excuse for the camera lens? I'd love to know. Cheap camera lenses huh $34 what is it, 100 150 millimeter hmm. oh sweetie you need a 40 to 150 millimeter lens for 50 bucks what is your excuse huh <gasps> see they're not supposed to be putting up tape though except to preserve a crime scene that is the purpose of crime scene tape now generally that is actually fairly accurate which surprised me that he would get that kind of right. Not fully right, so not entirely surprised. Yeah, crime scene tape is usually for the preservation of a crime scene. This, this, very well could be a crime scene that they are preserving. However, it is often referred to in a more professional setting, one that I'm sure you are unfamiliar with in the terms of law enforcement. I assume that your experience with law enforcement is very much on the non-professional side. It's referred to as barrier tape or crime scene barrier tape or abatement tape or well, there are a bunch of terms for it. It's basically establishing a barrier. It means do not cross this. This is our area. We are in control of this for whatever reason, often for the preservation of evidence, but not necessarily. Don't cross it. Stay back. Nothing about what has happened in this video so far is inconsistent with that. Something that the police can absolutely do. So... If they're trying to establish where he cannot go in front of, yes, crime scene tape, a very effective tool and a legally effective tool. It's a great choice on their part. Well done, officers. James Freeman, oh, pfft, let me just, yeah, there we go, it's better. 
say that there's shell casings around. Maybe somebody's been shot and there's there's blood on the ground there. Uh, maybe there's a, a DWI accident and we've got skid marks on the road. They, the purpose of the tape is not to get rid of the camera. It's to preserve the crime scene. Well, it's a good thing the tape's not getting rid of the camera, huh? You can still film just from a little bit farther. Telephoto lens guy. You know, just like a 150 millimeter. Something that goes 40 to 150 should do you just fine. Maybe if you want to get crazy, 300 millimeter. But well, I don't know if your pockets are deep enough for that. Might be an extra $25. 50 to 250 millimeter lens. Yeah, you can get them for like 90 bucks used. Come on, guy. So this is going to be Arizona DPS, and yeah, they are going to arrest me. So my wife will come pick up the car. She's got uh, spare keys. I don't Just... Does he also have one of these? James, if you know you're going to get arrested, maybe, I don't know, consider not getting arrested? Just a thought. I'm not you. I don't live your life, but uh, <laughs> I know what choices I'd make, and it's not this. I don't know what they'll book me on. I'm I do, but we'll get to that. I mean, it, it's just ridiculous and stupid of them to do this. If I had to take a wild guess, what's the go-to every time? Interference. Interference has to be something physical. In other words, interference has to be like he's trying to go from his car to this car to search the car, and uh, and I'm physically keeping him from doing so. That can't be right. Hold on, guys. Arizona obstruction interference statute. Okay, Arizona statute 13-2409, obstructing criminal investigations or prosecutions, classification. A person who knowingly attempts by means of bribery, misrepresentation, intimidation, or force, or threats of force to obstruct, delay, or prevent the communication of information or testimony related to a violation of any criminal statute to a peace officer, magistrate, prosecutor, or grand jury. Oh, it does require force. That's interesting. It usually doesn't, I feel, in my experience. But what does that tell us? There's almost certainly a different statute that this would fall under. Huh, let's go check that out. Arizona statute. Oh, here we go. That was really easy. Failure to comply with police officer. Classification. This is under 28-622. A person shall not willfully fail or refuse to comply with any lawful order or direction of a police officer invested by law with authority to direct, control, or regulate traffic. And then B, a person who violates the section is guilty of a class two misdemeanor. Now, you may look at this and say, well, uh, that's only in relation to uh, traffic control. That's actually not a bad argument, but there's nothing in here that actually states that the orders or the instructions uh, have to be about traffic. It just has to be someone who has the authority to direct, control, or regulate traffic. Now, can the construction come into play and you say, well, they wouldn't put that in there unless that was specifically what it's about. But here's the thing. This, that's a traffic stop, according to James Freeman. Therefore, this is about traffic. And therefore, that statute should absolutely apply. Now, I am not a lawyer. I have not reviewed the case law on this. So I can't confirm this, but that seems like a much better charge than obstruction in the state of Arizona, although in other states, this would probably not be how it would go down. Now, if the state law doesn't apply, there might be other laws in the county or city or town, the municipality, etc., where this is happening. And we'll get to that in a second. But for now, let's keep watching the video. So he's this. Our perimeter is already established. I need you to step out our perimeter. Where's your super? You can record all you want over there, but not in our perimeter. Where's your supervisor? Get so out. He can he can keep recording. That's fantastic. Get the light out of my eyes now. Whoa, hey! Get the light out of my eyes now. Right Calm down, guy. Go over there. Get your supervisor now. Go over there, sir. Get your supervisor. There's generally no requirement for them actually to get a supervisor. I don't know why people think that to be the case. There might be some departments where they have like a department policy where they will make an effort as much as it's reasonable to get a supervisor on scene. I'm, I'm sure that's actually a thing, but that doesn't mean every department don't know. It's not always going to happen. Now the flashlight in the eyes thing, the officer's putting that flashlight in your face for a few reasons. Let me tell you as someone who was trained on this sort of thing, we weren't actually trained to like shine it in people's eyes, but like I know the details. They shine it in your face so they can identify you, see who you are, that way, if something happens, they need to identify you. Cool. They got that. It's a thing called a brain. Try using it sometime. Now, other things. You want to see their face because the face 
telegraphs? Is that the right word? I'm not really sure. But it, it basically, if you're going to make a movement, you can do something crazy. Often the face will be the first thing to sort of twitch or look or do whatever. You want to be seeing the face. But if the purpose is to illuminate your face, you could shine the flashlight anywhere around here, and the light will still illuminate the face, and that's actually a fair argument. But here's the third thing. One of the reasons you put a light in somebody's eyes is so they can't see you very well. So they can't see you very well. They can't attack you very well. During a traffic stop, we have all sorts of lights. We have uh, in our cars, and not every department will have this, but when I was in, our car had like, the flashing lights, of course. We also had uh, these bright white lights that would shine forward and to the side. We also had our spotlights, our little things on the near the side of mirrors. Amazing. Miss them so much. They're so useful. You'd be amazed how useful they are. But what you do is you shine that into their rear view mirrors, the little, well, the side mirrors, so that they can't see your vehicle very well. Because if they're going to attack you, there you go. Of course, they can turn their mirrors so that that light isn't hanging in the eyes. But then they can't see your vehicle. Mission accomplished. Go over there. Get your supervisor now. Go over there, sir. Get your supervisor before you do anything else. Really welcome to call. Get your okay. supervisor before you yeah, do anything else. There. I'm not going to ask He's you asking again. you nicely to step up. I'm telling step you there. nicely. No, thank He's you. If that's him being nice, what's he like when he's not being nice? Step out of the perimeter. There's, perimeter. There's no perimeter. You filmed it and acknowledged it. It's very clear what the perimeter is. Yes, there is a perimeter. You okay? Yes, sir, what are you going to... No, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Go do your job. Go do your job. Leave me alone. Yeah, uh, their job is securing their scene. And they're trying to get you out of it so that it is secured. This is literally their job. If you're upset that they're doing this, you are the problem. They are doing their job. I'm asking you nicely to leave me alone. There's no All right, I do want to point out, I, I know, interruptions. Blah. He did say specifically, step out of the perimeter. Now, before that, there was a lot of, please step out. I'm asking you to step out. That's a request, to be fair. You, you get a good legal defense on that, potentially. If they're like, well, they didn't order me. They asked. That's not, that's not an order. It's actually not a bad defense. I'm not saying it's perfect. But I do want to point out right there, right there, he said, step out of the perimeter. That is an order. That's for a game. They let you step out. Now, when 100% becomes a crime. Not that it wasn't already pretty clearly a crime, but that's pretty good. Love to see it. In perimeter, I can be all the way, way up there on the sidewalk. I gave you a ton of space. I could be up on the sidewalk. I can be on the sidewalk. I gave you a ton of. All right, I'll go be on the sidewalk. Then, uh, then let me stay here where I think it's a safe distance rather than. Up oh, I'm sorry. Are you a police officer? Are you in control of the scene? What you think doesn't really matter, does it? No, it clearly doesn't. Let's keep going. Up close to you on the sidewalk. <laughs> They're going to arrest me. What's your name? What's your name? All right. Keep the light down out of my eyes and I'll keep it out of yours. Oh, yeah. No, that's not how that works. See, they have a legitimate reason for keeping it in your eyes. You don't have a legitimate reason for keeping it in their eyes. Not, you know, according to the law and all of that works. Now, I'm sure you can make some arguments. They, uh, they wouldn't hold up. But, yeah, you don't get to shine your light in their eyes. They have a job to do. It's night. If they can't see, you're obstructing that work. Now, we've already reviewed the Arizona statute on obstruction, and it requires force. Now, would a flashlight be considered force? I hesitate to believe that. I, that, that seems like a stretch. Could it be argued? Sure. Could it be argued successfully? Less sure. I would, I would say no. But at that point, if the officer is being you know, prevented from being able to see and do his job, what he can say is, stop shining that light in my eyes. And then it meets the elements, it would appear, of failure to obey a lawful order from a police officer. This isn't complicated stuff. We have an individual. Go over there. Go over there. You can hear on the radio them calling. They have an individual on the perimeter that won't leave. Oh, yeah, the backup's coming, bro. You might want to get yourself scarce. Go over there. Keep sir, the light out of my eyes. There, Just keep your light perimeter. down out of my eyes. You're making. Stay away from my perimeter, sir. There's no. F Shut up, dude. Sir, go away from my perimeter. So that's what I'm gonna. What's ask your name? You. What's your? Ask what time. is your name? Then I'm gonna tell you. Step over there. What is your name? Yes, yes. I'm gonna ask you. Then I'm gonna tell you. And then the third thing would be I'm gonna make you. But you generally don't vocalize that. That's just sort of the ask, tell, make. But you're not gonna be like, if you don't do it, I'm gonna. You can, but not really kind of frowned upon because it isn't really 
great for de-escalation. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, I asked you. Now I'm going to tell you however he said it. Oh, I love to see this officer is doing great, actually. I know a lot of auditors are like, he's doing terribly. No, actually, he's doing pretty great. He's doing pretty great. It's good stuff. It's good to see. What is your name? Sir, go over there. What is your sidewalk. name? Get your supervisor. Now, I told you to get your supervisor. Now, do it. I'm telling you now to step over there by the sidewalk. Now, I, I got to pause it again. I know. Argh, so many pauses. Argh, I'm going to get mad comments about it. Watch the original video. I gave you everything you need to know. Actually, it's in the description of the video. So go check it out if you don't like the interruptions. It doesn't matter. As far as the name of the officer goes, doesn't the officer have to give his name? Well, that's a great question. Not necessarily. That's going to come down to department policy. Now, per the First Amendment, you have the right to petition the government for a redress of grievances, which usually means that a police officer will have to have some sort of unique identifier. Usually that's going to be a name and a badge number, but not every department does it that way. Most do, certainly not all of them. However, verbally, Giving that information is going to be department policy. In a situation like this, where it's dark, yes, you'd probably want to give it, because then you might be able to argue, oh, well, I was not able to identify them because it's dark, and that violates my right to petition the government for redress of grievances, because I cannot identify that specific officer, and then it can be counter-argued, well, you knew the time and the place, you can request the, the call logs or the arrest incident report and know every single officer, well, in this case, it would be uh, Trooper. Sorry, Rennie. She gets so mad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's my moderator, folks. Uh, y y there are arguments back and forth, but do they have to verbally say it? No, not necessarily. And even if they did, even if there was a department policy saying you have to verbally give it, I've never seen a department policy that did not also say as long as it is reasonable to do it at the time. In this case, he approached their scene and started demanding information. What the officer at this point, what would probably make sense to do, and what our training was, would be to say, hey, I'd be happy to give it to you, once you get out of my boundary, once we finish this stop, obviously you want to stick around. We'll give it to you once this is done. But this is our priority, not this. We're trying to get back to this, not this. In fact, you get behind that barrier. We'll keep doing our thing. We'll send someone out you with a list of everyone here, and they'll give it to you, names and badge numbers, right? That would make sense. That would be a good way to do that. Is it required? Eh, depends on the department policy. But it's not guaranteed, and with Freeman getting so much wrong already, I hesitate to believe he's correct about this one. Well, technically, I made the argument for him, but that doesn't matter. He's thinking it. I bet he's thinking it. Are you disobeying a lawful order? No, you're disobeying a lawful order, you dummy. You, you don't have the authority to give them lawful orders. What are you, whoa, what are you talking about? Stop it. I'm telling you, step over there. Bro. It doesn't have to be like this. It sure doesn't, but you've already said you're going to get arrested. You're the one who has made it this way, James. Come on. Ugh. I'm going to stop the video right there. We're going to do a part two. Oh, my goodness, guys. There's a lot. The second half has him getting tased and beaten, apparently. So let's check that out in the next video. See you guys there. And until the next time, be good. Stay safe.